here we are looking at the slide of renal parenchyma with diabetic nephropathy. Here we are in the cortex of the renal parenchyma. Uh, here we have uh, the proximal tubules with slightly more voluminous epithelial cells with gran slightly granular cytoplasm. Here we have the distal tubules and here we have the renal corpuscles uh, with glomeruli. And this is the Bauman's capsule, uh, the Bauman space, which is not obliterated in this case. And uh, here we have glomerular uh, capillaries. This is the lumen of the capillary. And this is the glomerular filtration barrier, uh, which uh, is responsible for the blood filtration and primary urine formation. The earliest change of the diabetic nephropathy is diffusely thickened but otherwise normal glomerular basement membrane so the thickened basement membrane uh, is here in these parts and over the time that can progress to mesangial hypercellularity and increased mesangial matrix which we see in this part of the glomerulus this mesangial sclerosis then can progress into nodular phase and it can create the nodules so when we see the nodules uh, we can call that Kimmelsteel Wilson syndrome, and these nodules are also called Kimmelsteel Wilson nodules. Here we have an example of, uh, of the nodular structure. Here we have another example of glomeruli with these Kimmelsteel Wilson nodules. And over the time, this can progress to complete sclerosis and destruction of the glomerulus, which can be seen here or here. This is complete hyalinization and complete destruction of the renal corpuscle. Deposits of hyaline material can be found not only in the center of the glomerulus, but also underneath the parietal cells of the Bauman's capsule, as here in this case. Now, all of these morphological changes are caused mostly by hyperglycemia, uh, so it is very important in the diabetic patients to control um, glycemic levels in the blood. And if you have uncontrolled hyperglycemia, that can vary uh, rapidly lead to the destruction or damage of these glomeruli. This happens by the process called non-enzymatic glycosylation. So basically if you have a high level of the glucose in the blood it gets uh, to all of these structures and it can cause the damage uh, of the chemical structure called glycosylation. So many different proteins can be affected uh, including glomerular basement membrane collagen and also other matrix, matrix proteins. This glycosylation can then lead uh, to injury and remodeling. It promotes protein cross-linking and it can also stimulate uh, synthesis of the growth factors. So TGF beta, for example, is responsible for the fiber production um, <coughs> in the tissue. Damage of the glomerular basement membrane then can result in uh, microalbuminuria and over the time that can lead to severe nephrotic syndrome. So the normal function of glomerular basement membrane is damaged and then the proteins can get from the blood into the urine and uh, then it, get, uh, it, is not filled, uh, it is not retained in the blood and we see high levels of the protein in the urine. Similar damage of the glomeruli can be caused by high blood pressure and if we have these, uh, this end stage changes like sclerosis of the glomeruli uh, that can be caused by both uh, diabetes mellitus or hypertension. The pathogenetic mechanism is um, uh, all different and uh, in the case of diabetic nephropathy we see uh, more of these nodule-like formation and Kimmel-Steel wheels and nodules are quite specific for diabetes, diabetes mellitus and diabetic injury. Thanks for watching.